We've all heard them talked about, the specialty tools that you must have the next time you work on your bike. But what about the unsung heroes, the true underdogs of the workshop, the tools that live quietly, secretly, maybe they even have their own special drawer that nobody's allowed to look in that real mechanics use. Today I'm going to walk you through a few of my personal favorites and show you and tell you exactly why they're going to save you the next time you go to work on your bike. The first set of tools I want to talk about, and you actually probably have heard of these, are going to be calipers. Now, these have been all the rage and all the controversy here on YouTube lately in regards to bottom brackets, cheap Chinese frames. I don't understand that argument because I'm not in that arena, but it just validates the fact that everybody needs a good set. The next set of tools that I highly recommend are going to be little hex drivers. Now, these go from 1.5 all the way up to 3 millimeter, and for working on lock-on grips, brake components, any little tiny Allen keyed part that is on a bike, these are fantastic for. Now these originally I think are designed for working on like RC car engines, but for working on a bike and having these on hand and not having to go hunting for the right size Allen key or T-handle all the time, these have really saved me a lot of time. Our next set of tools are going to be thumb drivers. Now Seth from Burn Peak recently talked about Park Tools new thumb driver and I was a little confused by that because these have kind of been around forever it's not a new thing but that kind of seems to be the way the bike industry goes is all of a sudden there's a new tool in the bike industry that's been around in automotive for like 40 years so this one super super cheap it has a magnetic bit holder it's aluminum it's knurled literally just like the park one and it's not 30 dollars the other alternative here is I have one here that actually came from Matco that is ratcheting. So on this side, we have our bit driver. Oh, it's magnetic too. It ratchets, you can flip it to ratchet the other way. And then on the other side, you can actually put a socket and now you have both. So I highly recommend these. And for the $30 that the park tool one is, I don't really see anybody charging more than like $10, $15 for this, probably on Amazon. So pick up one of these. This is actually a little electronic screwdriver. And as far as torque output, it's not great. But for working on the little screws that are on shifter covers, this is incredible. Now, those screws are usually really, really fine. You can't just throw a number two Phillips in them all the time. They're really, really tiny. Get these little bits get one of these it is amazing just to be able to pop those screws out pop them back in and as far as over torquing because this doesn't put out a whole bunch of torque and a whole bunch of power you're not stripping those screws out so i use this all the time especially for adjusting shifters bleeding brakes doing little things like that quite honestly i don't know how i really lived without this before keeping a dirty bike kind of wrecks everything long term so Keep a set of these on your workbench. These are little wire pipe cleaners with this little plastic brush bristle thing on the end of them. It comes in a set of five. They're on a little key ring. You can throw them on a key hook, throw them on your keychain, whatever you want to do with them. And this works amazing for cleaning out in between brake calipers, derailleur components, even getting into shifters, all sorts of different things. Whenever you got a bolt that has dirt or mud caked into the top of it, these get right in there and clean it out. These are fantastic and Honestly, probably one of the better investments I've made. I like them, they're cheap, and everybody literally should own a set. There's no excuse. Now, I own so many picks at this point, it's not even funny. I bought the high-end ones, I bought the really cheap ones. These are the free ones that you get when you spend more than 50 bucks at Harbor Freight. You've got a choice between this, an angle grinder, a flashlight. Just get the picks, they're useful. These are great for taking off grips, trying to pull a cable through, picking stuff off, getting brake pads out. I mean. There's really no limit to the uses of these. I mean, even getting splinters out of your finger. And then in the event that these break, they're super cheap to replace. I also highly recommend getting the little dental set they have because they're a lot finer than these. Just different applications, but always have picks on hand. Nobody ever talks about it, but they're so useful. This video is sponsored by Evo One. I took all of my past automotive detailing experience. I brought in brilliant people. We formulated these two products, our ceramic spray and our waterless wash specifically for bikes. And I would put it up against anything that is currently on the market. We've already been in multiple bike shops, including big corporate owned chains. They all say it kicks ass and I can't wait for y'all to try it. Check out the link down below in the description. And thank y'all so, so much for supporting not only this channel, but my dream. This is a little tire inflator. Now, whenever this company reached out to me and said, hey, we want to send you one, 
I was kind of of the mindset of what will this little half of an iPhone possibly do? It's very convenient. Now I have a lot of bikes that I don't frequently ride. They're in storage, the tires tend to go flat. This has been the perfect solution for that because they're literally hanging. I don't want to pull each one down and get winded trying to pump it up, climb back up the ladder, hang them. See what I mean? I can just literally hop on a ladder and just kind of go down the line with this. I like it a lot. And I've done like four or five fat tires with this with it only losing like one bar of battery. So I don't know, I'm gonna keep testing it. Maybe look into little mini tire inflators. That might be a very convenient solution. One of my all time favorite tools are actually gonna be feeler gauges. Now these typically like in the automotive world, we use them to check lash adjustments. We use them to check spark plug gaps, things like that. For bikes, I actually use them to check tolerances quite frequently as well as preload when it comes to like hubs, different bearing assemblies, things like that, as well as double checking that things are properly seated and I don't have too excessive of a gap underneath. I would really, I mean, for the price, 10 bucks, maybe, get a set of feeler gauges. They really might come in handy. My specialty in the automotive field was remote diagnostic coding and programming, and this literally fits that to a T. Now, when it comes to some of the Bluetooth devices we have nowadays, a big problem we face is gonna be interference, such as garage door openers, for example. Whenever you're trying to isolate different signals that a bike or a component comes around frequently, you can actually put them in a proximity box, isolate that signal, isolate different components, and truly test and figure out and diagnose that system properly. These are diagnostic dice. Now, these come in really, really handy. Let's say, for example, you have a derailleur that you're just trying to figure out should I try to repair it? Is it really the issue? Or should I just replace it and hang a part on? Now, that's when you whip these out. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna shake these up and roll them across a really flat surface, be it a workbench, a tabletop, the shop floor, whatever you've got handy. Now, in the case of these, whenever they roll onto an even number, that is going to tell you that you need to replace that part, no questions asked. Now, if it rolls on an odd number, you are going to roll it a few more times until you land on even, and that's going to give you said answer. These things have saved my butt so many times. The final two here are less of cool tools, and they're more so MacGyver-esque tips and tricks. One thing I like to do on stubborn bolts or bolts that, you know whenever you back a bolt out, maybe it's rusty, maybe it's got some buildup in there, you just don't really wanna throw Loctite in and make that situation worse. Drag it across a bar of soap a few times, get some soap on the threads. It usually helps clean all those threads out and get that bolt back in cleanly where you don't run the risk of stripping it. And this next one is actually liquid skin. Now, I always keep these in my med kit whenever I go ride, as well as my truck, pretty much anywhere where I could possibly injure myself, which is basically everywhere, including my pocket most of the time. Now, I was on a trip with my wife recently. I, embarrassingly enough, had forgotten to top off her tubeless sealant and I did not bring any with me, and we had one more day to ride after she popped her front tire. And I actually used this to band-aid up the inside of the Skinwall Vittoria tire that's on her bike, and it actually has held for the past three months, and it finally went flat the other day. Again, I'd forgotten about it, and she doesn't ride that bike very much. So, you know, I'm not sure if that was just dumb luck in this case, but, I mean, it worked, so give it a shot next time. Well, what do you think about my cool tools? I really hope that you learned something, and if not, I hope you're inspired to go digging through your toolbox, see what you got, and see what you might be able to use the next time you work on your bike. If you have any cool tools that you think I left off this list, let me know down below in the comments section. Please subscribe to this channel, and as always, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Yeah.